What if I told you two of the most underused weapons in BattleBit Remastered are about to become the meta and some of the most overpowered weapons in the game? I'm not trolling. The PP2000 and the Honey Badger are about to become some of the strongest weapons in BattleBit. The developers posted on Discord what you can expect in an upcoming update, and in it includes a buff to the Honey Badger and to the PP2000 that is going to make them king of the hill. And in this video, we're going to discuss those patch notes that they posted, and we're going to tell you why these guns are going to be king of the hill, and what we missed in this update that could be included in a next one. So on the BattleBit Remastered official Discord server, they posted in upcoming updates um, what we can expect out of the next update. Note this update is not live yet. So it's not live yet, but uh, this is what we can expect. So we're going to get into the meat and potatoes in a little bit, the Honey Badger and the PP2000. I'll give you that little teaser up front because it's going to be well worth talking about it later in the video, but we're going to get through the rest of the patch notes first. So here we have a quick note that FAMAS damage is increased from 24 to 26. It may seem like a small note, but I'm going to talk about that later because when you compare this to the MP7 now, it's basically an MP7 in assault rifle form. Um, so we're going to talk about that in a bit. The SG550, basically the only drawback of the gun was the muzzle flash and they reduced the muzzle flash from 0.5 to 0.6. So it's going to become one of the better assault rifles at range unless you use the AK-15 or the uh, AUG A3. The SG is going to become very viable at that range. All right. So this is the only the only adjustments to a weapon in these patch notes that make zero sense to me. The Ultimax is one of the weaker LMGs in the game, but it's the last LMG you unlock. And none of the buffs they gave it really affect the gun. Like they didn't buff the fire rate. They didn't buff the damage. They didn't mess with range. Anything that would affect how fast this gun kills or how usable it is. They just basically said, hey, we made the reload speed faster. We reduced the recoil and uh, we made the ADS speed faster and the run speed a little bit faster. Okay, it's still not going to make me want to use that thing over an L86 or an M249, but I guess. Um, so these are the interesting ones here. The AS Ball, very underused weapon. So they greatly reduced the horizontal recoil from 1.9 to 1.2. And they increased the accuracy. They lowered the sound spread from 600 to 200. So this thing basically is going to have almost an integrated suppressor now without you having to actually put one on the thing. So that'll be great for like people who like sneaking around the map and, you know, picking enemies off and being stealthy and flanking. You might want to pick up the AS Vol now because uh, enemies aren't going to hear you unless you're like they're like right next to you. The control was lowered on the scene. They increased the reload time and they buffed at the range from 20 to 40 meters for the fall off to start. Um, very solid buff to the AS Vol. Um, they did a lot to this thing without actually like making it broken. So they made it more usable without making it broken. It's still not going to be the meta, but it's usable now. So it well, will be usable now. So that's great. This thing, we're going to talk about this more in a little bit when we get into the firing range and we compare it against the P90 and the best guns in BattleBit Remastered. But these buffs are insane. You may say, oh, they nerfed the damage. So that's a nerf. I thought that too. And my friend explained it to me last night and I was like, oh, you are right, Ivan, as you so often are about everything in video games, because he lives and breathes weapons and weapon stats and FPS shooters. Um, and yeah, so I, we'll explain why this is actually a buff to the gun and not a nerf. And as you read through the patch notes, it'll make more sense to you. So they did lower the damage by four from 32 to 30, 28. Pretty hefty. But they said, hey, we greatly reduced the recoil horizontally and vertically i mean vertically not a lot but enough to make a difference and horizontally almost by a whole point they reduced the, ver the horizontal recoil they lowered the bullet velo so you may say hey they nerfed the damage and the bullet velo what the heck but like i said they made the gun much more controllable they buffed the accuracy and they buffed the fire rate from 800 to 880 now if you recall 20 damage is the exact damage that the p90 does per bullet and the p90 has an 800 fire rate so this thing's going to have the same damage per bullet as the p90 at a higher fire rate than the p90 now and the sound spread was lowered from 600 to 200 so similar to the ball now you're not going to hear this thing from across the whole freaking map um, it's going to be a little more stealthy of a weapon. And they also lowered the reload time. This was much needed because, let's face it, uh, 4.17 second reload time is insane. And it's the same reason that people don't use the Groza that much. Because the Groza on paper is a really great weapon, but the reload time just makes it not that usable for people who like to be aggressive players. So they lowered it to 3.79. And they buffed the mag size because they buffed the fire rate so you don't burn through the mag as fast. So they burned through it probably about the same rate as you burned through the mag before. And they buffed the range from 20 to 40 meters for the fall off to start. I'm going to talk about this gun in a bit more in length when we get to the firing range and you can compare it against the P90. Um, 
and you're going to see why this thing's going to be one of the new meta weapons. Um, but we're going to get to the next new meta weapon later, right here, the PP2000, which is going to be as drawn, if not stronger, than the Honey Badger. So, uh, yeah. Okay, so the G36C on paper is a better M4, but because of the recoil and the controllability of this thing, it wasn't used that much. So they basically just said, hey, we're going to increase the vertical recoil, which was never the problem with the weapon. So whatever, do that. And then they said, we're going to greatly reduce the horizontal recoil from 1 to 8.84. Um, so now you're just gonna be able to slap a vertical grip on the scene and make it pretty controllable. So not bad. UMP 45 or the ump 45 as I like to call it to trigger some people who got mad at me for saying ump 45. Increase the damage by three. Slightly increase the recoil but I mean not by much. It's still gonna be a beam. It was basically a beam before uh, and they lowered the bullet velo and they nerfed the range. So they, it's just not gonna be it's not gonna be usable when you compare it to the likes of the MP7, the MP5, the P90, now the Honey Badger, and uh, the PP2000 when it gets buffed. Um, it's not gonna be usable still compared to those weapons, but it's gonna be more usable than it was before. So people who like the UMP45, it's still gonna be a solid weapon that you can get eliminations with. Probably a B or an A tier weapon still, definitely not S tier. Uh, I would put it high B tier. I wouldn't put it A tier. Um, now we get to the big one. The PP2000. Now, if you recall, the PP2000 already has basically zero recoil. And they basically are saying, hey, we're increasing the damage by one per bullet. We're reducing the recoil some more. We're buffing the fire rate from 900 to 1000, which that's a huge change. And we're reducing the ADS time to make it faster ADS. And, and of course, to compensate for all that, the damage fall off is going to start at 30 meters instead of 50 now. This thing is going to become the new meta. There's going to be no reason to use the Chris Vector anymore. I'm sorry. Like, the MP5 is still going to be viable because of the range it has. And same with the P90. But for close range to that mid-range combat level, the PP2000 is going to be the best weapon in the game. There's no reason to use your Vector anymore that does 22 damage at a 1200 fire rate. It's still going to be solid. But why do that when you can have a gun that has less recoil? 2 damage more per bullet at a 200 less fire rate faster ADS time and no recoil whatsoever. So um, the PP2000 is going to become that dude on the block. Lean spam has been nerfed. I don't think that was a problem to begin with. I mean, whatever, like people doing this number, like it's annoying, but it wasn't a problem to shoot them in the legs and they're like, oh, how'd you kill me? Like your legs are still showing when you're leaning, my guy. Um, all snipers are gonna give off stronger muscle flash. I mean, I don't think that was a problem to begin with. If I'm going to be honest, the problem with snipers is the fact that people use the mid range optics instead of the long range optics. So they basically nerf the long range optics more. And so mid range optics are going to be a lot more viable. Um, OK, people already use mid range optics a lot, put zeroing and rangefinder and didn't see a need to use long range optics like i always just used a 4x acog sight with a sniper put zeroing on bound it to my scroll wheel and had a range finder on my gun and i snipe people from like a thousand meters out like i guess uh, snipers didn't really need to be messed with they're already in an okay state muzzle flash is never the problem i could always see muzzle flash through buildings through trees whatever man led6 is gonna have a default red dot sight no more ugly iron sights domination tickets increase so dom matches aren't going to end instantaneously anymore this one's a kind of an interesting change uh they buffed the trophy system so they moved it from the heavy gadget section and put it in the light gadget section and it's no longer going to destroy friendly nades which it never should have in the first place and it's going to give xp when it destroys an enemy grenade and destroying the trophy system itself will also give you XP. So the trophy system was introduced like I think the last update and I honestly thought it would be like one of the most used gadgets in the game, especially on maps like Wakistan where you're on the bridge and people are just chucking grenades wildly, wildly. Um, but it wasn't used that much. And so this is their attempt to make it more usable, um, which I think is going to be. And depending on how much XP it gives you when it destroys an aid, people are going to spam that thing now on the bridge. <laughs> Uh, news and updates are no longer going to show unless changed and players will get attack and defend bonus plus squad point when they are in the flag regardless of if the flag is marked as a target by the captain in the casual game modes and then all these weapons are going to have access to the okp7 p1 p78 pks scopes it's time to get into the meat and potatoes now of the update we're going to hop into the firing range we're going to show you the current stats these weapons have and the current recoil levels and usability that they have and we're going to compare it to what they will have and we're going to compare it to some of the weapons that it's now going to leap and namely the honey badger and the pp2000 the honey badger and the pp2000 are literally jumping from like 
B, C tier weapons all the way up to S tier weapons in one update. I'm not trolling. Let's start with the PP2000. Right now it does 23 damage per bullet at a 350 uh, velocity at a 900 fire rate. It's like, eh, it's kind of respectable, but I mean, when you have like the MP5 that has like 100 less fire rate at like that much more damage per bullet is like what use case is there for the pp2000 right especially when the pp19 exists when the mp7 exists the vector the mp5 and the p90 exist well if you look at the vector it does 22 damage per bullet at a 400 velocity at 1200 fire rate and that damage fall off starts at 30 meters and it's gradual right so what they basically did is they said hey the pp2000 is now going to have only a 200 less fire rate than the vector and it's going to do two more damage per bullet than the vector at a much lower recoil, much more controllability, and a fast reload time. Look at the reload time of this thing. 3.33. It's not much faster. I mean, the vector is 3.4, but it is faster than the vector. So if you look at the PP2000 now, the recoil is straight vertical. It has, like, no horizontal recoil. And what they did is they reduced the recoil even more. Yeah. So the recoil is already pretty controllable. Like, whatever. Right? Especially from closer it. Close range, sorry. Um, and what they did is they reduced it even more. So from that 50 meters in mark, you're just gonna be able to beam people because it's gonna have PP19 level recoil. And for those who recall, the PP19 is one of the most beamy SMGs in the game. The PP19 has a zero recoil whatsoever. And the PP19 is an SMG that you can beam people from like 80 meters out with, no problem, you know? Like, I mean, but obviously the PP2000 is not going to have the range of the PP19 because the PP2000 is going to have the same range as the Vector. But it's still going to be solid from 75 meters in. It's going to destroy any target in its path. Um, and this thing and the Vector are going to be like vying for the fastest TTK SMGs at close range. Um, yeah, they're going to be insane. Um, so PP2000, especially for a level 25 unlock, right? We talk about the Vector, okay, it's a rank 70 unlock, whatever. It's kind of the middle rank unlock, so it should be decently strong. Um, but the PP2000 is basically a base level gun. You hit level 25 so fast. Um, <laughs> and it's going to be one of the best, if not the best SMG in the game for close range combat. The MP5, in my opinion, is still going to be keen for all around for SMGs because it has that range and it has that 29 damage factor at the 800 fire rate and the bullet velo is 400. But PP2000 is going to slap from 50 meters in. Let's talk about the Honey Badger now. The Honey Badger, like I said, you might look and say you're, they're reducing the damage by four. Yes, but they're making the recoil so much more controllable. You look at the recoil of this thing now, that's quite a bit. And they're going to basically make the recoil like almost nothing. They're basically cutting the recoil of this thing almost in half. They're basically cutting it by a third, actually. So they're basically cutting the recoil by a third of this thing, buffing the mag size by one, and making it fire faster than the MP5 or than the P90 at the same damage of the P90. So if you look at the P90, and the P90 is widely regarded as one of the, if not the best weapons in the game, if the FAL didn't exist, this thing would be king. Let's just put it that way. The P90 does 28 damage per a bullet at a 390 velocity at uh, 800 fire rate the honey badger is going to do 28 damage per bullet at a 400 velocity at a fire rate of 880 so it's going to have a higher fire rate and more damage per bullet than the p90 and you might say then why would you use the p90 anymore well the p90 is still going to be keen for range it's going to have a little bit more range than the honey badger and it has a larger mag size and it's going to have a little bit of a faster reload so the p90 is still going to be like really usable right? Because it's going to be the gun for people who like to not have to reload, who like to be aggressive, who like to have that mag size, like to be able to spray their PDW at range. But the Honey Badger on paper is going to be a faster killing gun than the P90, especially from that 40 meter, 50 meter in mark. Now, if you use the Assault class, which has the reload buff with your Honey Badger or with your P90 too, that's when the, this is where the fun begins. Um, Yeah. Yeah, it's going to be, it's going to be something. So if you use the assault class with with the honey badger, uh, the reload speed is going to become pretty freaking fast. And like I said, this is all pre-buff. What you're seeing in game right now is all pre-buff because they haven't rolled the update out yet. Uh, before we go, let's talk about the FAMAS. I uh, almost 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 overlooked the FAMAS. Uh, so the FAMAS right now does 24 damage at a fire rate of 900. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You look at the MP7, 
And the MP7 is 25 damage per bullet at a 950 fire rate. So basically, if you gave the MP7 one more damage and reduced the fire rate by a 50, it would be the same gun as the FAMAS. And the FAMAS is an assault rifle. And the FAMAS, if you put the right attachments on this thing, the FAMAS, as it stands, look at the recoil. Not that bad at all for an assault rifle in this game. And look. The FAMAS is basically a PDW SMG and an assault rifle all in one. It's just kind of weak right now because of the damage per bullet that it does at that fire rate. But since they're buffing the damage per bullet to 26 at a 900 fire rate, uh, it's going to be comparable. It's going to be comparable. But it's not going to be the best weapon in the game. It's going to be like, it's going to be an A tier weapon. Let's put it that way. It won't be S, it'll be A tier. So overall, this update's going to change the weapon meta. The the PP2000 and the Honey Badger are about to become really good. The AS Vol is about to become way more usable. The G36 has got more usable. Uh, the Ultimax really didn't get any buff or nerf. They buffed and nerfed it at the same like it, it, it no change for me uh the sg is going to be more usable because the muzzle flash got reduced and that famas is going to be more usable so they're changing around the weapon meta a bit i mean i think they went a little overkill with the pp2000 but it's whatever instead of making the weapons more balanced overall they're just introducing a new meta which is typically what we see out of fps games anyways so it's whatever I would just like to see some of the SMGs get that range nerf that they're giving to the UMP and to the PP2000. I would like to see the MP5 get a little bit of a range nerf and make make those assault rifles more viable because there's still not much reason to use assault rifles in BattleBit Remastered. Um, let me know what you thought of the video. Let me know what you think of these changes that are coming to BattleBit Remastered. Um, and let me know what you think in the comments below. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed the video, make sure you like, make sure you subscribe. You can watch my stream every day on kick at kick.com slash cjam. And I'll see you next video.